G'day, my name's Philip Heath. Welcome back to this tutorial video on how to use this gravity reduction spreadsheet courtesy of the Geological Survey of South Australia. Uh, for this next portion of the video, we're going to look at the reduction tab. Uh, but before we do, it's worth saying one more thing about this sheet. You'll notice there's an elevation uh, option for this survey, um, we had elevations recorded uh, separately. It was for a microgravity survey uh, where we were taking into account the heights of the uh, sensor, uh, very precisely, millimetre precision. So we recorded that in a separate text file, which I'm just going to grab that information now and paste that in to this spreadsheet. And that's all lined up, ready to go. We're then going to take this information and paste it into the reduction spreadsheet. Now, this, this sheet, this tab, already has some information in it. This is there purely as an example of uh, how the process works. So I, I recommend keeping it there. It also contains equations. So a lot of the time you'll simply be pulling these uh, pulling these equations down and automatically populating uh, a lot of the information and it really is quite quite speedy once you get the hang of it uh, but this first section is simply uh, pasting in our raw data and it's designed so you can paste it in directly from a CG5 uh, gravity meter file or you can grab the information from this tab starting from the line uh, all the way up to the date. So I'm going to copy that over I'm going to paste that in uh, it works well if you uh, paste it into cell uh, column B first. I'm actually going to move those first two columns over so I have a line number, a station number and additional information in column C. I find it useful to record where your base stations are. Sorry, that's not a base station. And there. No, it doesn't want to doesn't want to paste because I pressed something else. Uh, I also find it useful to have repeats marked. You can mark everything else if you want stations, um, stations to be repeated or something. Uh, all that information can be very handy. So if everything's pasted across correctly, you should have the sensor height from the ground in metres. You should have a raw gravity reading in milligauss, a standard deviation, tilt x, tilt y, uh, temperature, earth tide correction, the length of the measurement in seconds, the number of rejects, the UTC time, uh, decimal date, uh, time and date, a terrain correction, which is zero in this case, and a date. So that should all be sitting there uh, neatly. You don't need, you don't actually need all of this information. You do need to make sure you have a raw gravity reading and a station number. The time also helps, but I'll mention time again in a moment. For the moment, we'll move on to step two. We're going to fill this column with our scale factor which we calculated earlier. And we can just double click on the little box there and that will automatically populate. That's re um, referencing uh, the previous sheet we worked on in the previous video. Um, so B69, you'll see that's that calibration factor uh, that we calculated, that scale factor. Okay, step three is to populate this column with the UTC time. The reason it's in there twice is because often here in Australia we um, our survey work goes over midnight in UTC time and if we have a gravity loop that goes over midnight it can cause um, some issues with our calculations uh, because it's going from 24 down to 0 and if you're calculating the difference uh, yeah, it, it can cause problems. So in this case we're not going over midnight but I am going to just uh, copy and paste the time in here. Ultimately we want workable times in this column. 
Next we need to fill this column with the known gravity at the base station. And that's the base station that used to start and end the loop. Uh, I have that recorded in a separate text file here, base station. It's in milligauss and it's in the AAGD07 datum. So I'm going to paste that there and populate that column with those values. And I'll just note here AAGD07 milligauss. And populate that as well. Okay, moving on. The next step, I'll just scroll along a little bit further so I'm not in the edge of the screen. We're going to recalculate that raw gravity based upon the calibration factor, which is a very simple equation. It's, it's just a division and you can double click on that little box and populate that automatically. So that's done now. That, that's done. Uh, the next step, in the next few steps, we're going to populate these columns with the start and end values, or the uh, start and end readings. Uh, I've found that doing this speeds up the process a lot. So we take our, our start loop reading, we're going to paste that as a value. Make sure you paste it as a value. And we're going to grab the end reading from that loop as well. Copy and paste. That goes in there. And we can just pull that down for the entire loop as we can with that one. So that's one loop done. We do the same for the second loop. Start value there. Whoops, make sure you paste values, otherwise, you'll have all sorts of issues. Paste values. Whoops. And just populate those columns. We then need to do the same thing for the time. This is a little bit quicker because we don't have to paste values here as they are uh, not equations in this case. So just make sure you're cutting that off at the right spot. That's not right. Also make sure when you pull these values down that they don't auto increment because uh, these should be constants. Start time copy and end paste. There we are. So we have the start and end time for each of those loops. Now the next series of columns, you'll notice they're all in blue. That's because we can simply grab all of these oops, and pull down or double click. Okay, and that will automatically populate. And you'll see here column AG is our observed gravity. Okay, so here's our first reading, and you'll notice that the first reading, first base reading, matches the base reading at the end 0 0.616, 0 0.616. So that's it, we've done the first step of the gravity reduction. The next step is to deal with our coordinates, our latitudes, our longitudes, eastings, northings, uh, as well as our heights. Now, in our previous tab, the GPS Grav Merge tab, we lined up all of our lats and longs and eastings and northings with our gravity readings. So we can simply grab these now and paste them into the appropriate column. So I've just copied the easting and northing in GDA94 and the elevation. Whoops. As always, paste values. And we'll just shift this across one. That's our elevation, our ellipsoidal height, and I need to populate the zone. This was in zone 52, the survey. Now ultimately, for our theoretical gravity calculation, we're going to need our we're going to need a latitude in GDA 94. Um, this spreadsheet will give you the option of using earlier equations, so the um, AGD 66 option is there too. To create the, uh, the latitudes, um, remember we can't use the latitudes from the previous sheet because they're in a different format. 
we're going to use a different spreadsheet. First, I'll just copy all that information. With this Excel spreadsheet, we've come another one called GDA underscore AGD convert XLS and a DLL with it. I'm going to open that up and you should be presented with something that looks like this. This spreadsheet is used to convert Eastings and Northings from AMG or MGA and convert them, so the outputs all along here, into longitude, latitude, uh, Easting and Northing and degree minute second version as well. Um, you can The input can also be longitude and latitude as decimal degrees or longitude, latitude as degrees, minutes, seconds. We're going to be using the grid option today. However, before we do that, under this first tab where it says usage, it does tell you that you need to just trick Excel uh, into assuming that it's looking in the current directory because this, this spreadsheet needs to refer to that DOL file. And we do that by just going File, Open, We'll just direct ourselves to our current folder. Here we are, and click Cancel. Excel is now looking in the right place. So we'll paste our Easting Northing Zone and Ellipsoidal Height here. And then all you have to do is press Control T, and we are presented with an option. Our values here are in GDA 94. So we're going to hit the No button to convert them to AGD. And there we are. So we now have a longitude and latitude. I'm going to copy them and paste them into my gravity reduction spreadsheet. These are longitude and latitude uh, AGD 66. As always, make sure you paste values. Coming back here, we'll also grab the easting, the northing, the zone, and the ellipsoidal height, which are in AGD 66 values and we can paste them in the appropriate column here. You'll note we don't yet have our latitude in GDA 94, so we simply go back into the spreadsheet. We can paste this output as input now. Again, paste values, hit Control T again. This time these AGD values need to be converted to GDA, so we hit yes. And we now have a longitude and a latitude in GDA 94 which we can copy and paste into our reduction spreadsheet like that. The blank column here is the ellipsoidal height again but taking into account the uh, sensor height. So if you've recorded the height of your gravity meter you'll want to uh, populate this column. This section of the spreadsheet is now complete. All the information you should need to proceed is there. So let's move on to step 19, which we're largely going to skip over. Um, until recently, it's been pretty commonplace to utilise the orthometric heights in gravity processing rather than ellipsoidal heights. Uh, however, that thinking has changed. We now use our ellipsoidal heights. However, if for whatever reason you do want to use uh, AHD heights, orthometric heights, uh, this little section of the spreadsheet will help you out. Simply populate the uh, next series of four columns and copy this information into a separate file, save it as a CSV and submit it to the Geoscience Australia web page. The link is on the About tab under Step 5. Here it is. Just go to that website, uh, upload the CSV file, and it will spit out another CSV file which you can paste in here. It will have the AHD heights as well. However, we're not going to use that today. As I say, we're going to be using the ellipsoidal heights. So let's move on. And the next step is the Bouger gravity calculation. And the first step of that is to pick a density. And we can do that just by selecting what's already there and copying down or typing in manually what we want to use. We're just going to use 2.67 today. 
The next series of columns are all greyed out. These represent all the different theoretical gravity equations that, uh, that I have found uh, in the literature uh, that can be used. Uh, this uh, spreadsheet was originally put together as a project uh, to compare the differences between all these different equations. We won't be using any of the greyed out um, portions of this uh, spreadsheet, uh, but if you do want to play around with them, it's simply a case of uh, pulling these equations down to populate the theoretical gravity equation and then using um, and, and then using these to uh, work out your Bouger slab. We're going to be performing, uh, we're going to be calculating the spherical cap. So step 21 uh, simply involves making sure that we have observed gravity in micrometers per second squared. Now our observed gravity that we used for this example was in um, milligauss, AAGD07, so we can actually skip straight ahead up to this column here, CF. Okay, if columns AG, AH, that's our observed gravity, I'll just scroll back, there you go, AG, AH, okay, we're in AAGD07 in milligauss, I'm going to scroll back up here, okay, we, all we need to do is simply pull this equation down. And all that is is multiplying that um, that observed gravity by 10 to convert to micrometers per second squared. If you um, calculated your observed gravity in 1965 milligauss or in 1984 milligauss, simply work through these steps until you end up at this column here which will be AAGD 07 in micrometers per second squared. Okay. Ultimately, one of these two columns will be will have observed gravity in AAGD 07 micrometers squared. Okay. And just take note of which one it is. So just, just remember we're using CF. Uh, the next series of equations um, are the the Bouger anomaly slab equations just for some um, just for some different different techniques you can ignore them if it's in grey you can ignore it um, but feel free to muck around with it if you want to experiment the final part of the spreadsheet of the reduction tab is to calculate the spherical Bouger correction with equations courtesy of Geoscience Australia you just have to pull these equations down, auto-populate, as um, most of the spreadsheet is. However, there's two things you should check beforehand. In CS, you'll be uh, referencing the ellipsoidal height. Okay. If you want to be taking into account the sensor height, okay, if you're doing a very detailed survey, just make sure you're referencing the right column. So here, AT, just scrolling back, um, my column AT is the ellipsoidal height incorporating the sensor height. If you don't have that information, perhaps just change that equation to reference AS instead. And that's, that's fine, that's fine. The second thing to note is we need to make sure that we are referencing our uh, AAGD 07 micrometres per second squared. So that was the CE or CF. Okay, CE, CF. We're going to just make sure that we're referencing CF and it is okay so we're referencing CF it's referencing some other things too but the important thing is is referencing CF once you've checked that simply grab the last line here or two doesn't matter and automatically populate it double click on that little box and there you'll have in this final column we have the um, Bouger spherical cap Bouger anomaly. Okay, and again, you can you can do whatever checks you want just to make sure that everything's all right. Um, that's that start and end value, I think, are the same. It looks like it's rounded off in one case, but that's that's all right. It's correct to uh, two milligauss. Uh, sorry, to 0 0.01 milligauss, two decimal places. And that's pretty much it for that sheet. 
Now, the, um, the next sheet here is the final data tab. And you can, all you have to do is pull this down. I've actually already populated it. You can pull this down, pull it down a bit further. And it has selected columns from the previous sheet. So the point, station type, long and lat, um, observed gravity, and uh, isostatic. So the spherical cap, and that's in micrometers per second squared. So that's a simple way just to grab all of that, a simple way to collate the data and transfer it to another program, maybe to make a grid, a nice colourful picture of the data for further analysis. Um, I'll jump ahead to the repeats tab which has, um, as I say at the top here, I haven't really found a quick way to do this. What I have done is simply selected um, based on the, the, the extra information I wrote for the uh, back on the, the reduction sheet. I've grabbed all the repeats, stuck them here, and then simply calculated the difference. The differences between um, either the spherical cap or the um, observed gravity values. I then take all the differences uh, and I collate them into a histogram. I tend to use MATLAB to make that histogram. I find that works very well. Finally, this Isagao conversion tab is a useful tab if you need to convert uh, Isagao 65 to Isagao 84. There are two ways to do this. There are two equations to do this. And well, actually, there are more, but the two main ways are here. And I'll put the reference to the uh, the report book, which contains all the information and, and the equations. Uh, if you do need to convert a, a single value over, simply paste that observed gravity value in here. Make sure it's in milligauss. Um, this this column here, column B, represents one method, and column D represents another method. The first method, you also need a latitude and longitude. Make sure that your latitude is positive. Even though we're in the southern hemisphere, just make sure that's positive. That, that's quite important. The, the numbers just don't look very good at all if, if that's wrong. And down the bottom here are the outputs. So in Isagao, 84, there's one value using one technique and the value using another. The reason there's a box around this one is because this is sort of the more common, commonly used equation. People tend to use this technique to calculate it. Down the bottom here I've also included an AAGD07 value and that's using this value here to calculate it. If you want to calculate an 84 value from a 65 value, then just use this side of the spreadsheet. It's exactly the same. Put your 84 value in here, uh, lats and longs in here, and you'll find your output down the bottom. It's all, it's all pretty easy. So that's about it from me. Thank you very much for watching. Good luck with your gravity processing, and I'll catch you around. See ya.